G'day, welcome back to the build table and an update on the project. First of all, recap. Crap, we tried this, didn't work. Waste of time, waste of money. Don't waste your money on that. So, I went out and I bought some more sodium hydroxide and hydrous crystalline. Listen, it's just dry crystals. Oh, yeah, it'll do. Nah, we need a bit more. Oh, hang on, a bit more. You can't have too much of a good thing, and this is a really good thing for making hydrogen. Now, last time people were a little bit worried about the safety measures I was taking. So, this time, see, got the full face chemical shield helmet. Stops the splashes, making you go blind. Essential for working with the larger quantities. Um, I also have safety tape keep out can see the go to stop little children small puppy dogs and others wandering into the area where they may get a slightly corrosive burn and of course for my protection and your pleasure full body condoms look at this this covers my entire body i'm very small i'll be wearing these even though sodium hydroxide actually is not that corrosive to skin what happens is if you get sodium hydroxide on your skin it actually makes it feel kind of slippery because what it's doing is converting the fats in your skin tissue into soap because one of the main uses for sodium hydroxide is making soap. In the old days, people made soap at home. They got the fat, the renderings from their meat when they did their cooking and they separated out that fat, poured it off the cooking pan, added some of this stuff, stirred it up, gave it a bit of a cook and the result was soap. So there you go. When you're soaping yourself up in the shower, you are literally bathing in animal fat. Isn't that wonderful? There you go. So that's what we're doing today. I'm going to do a couple of inflation tests. We're going to test some of the little balloons, which I have lost. No, I haven't. Ta da Helium grade balloons. Made in China, do we believe that? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, why would it, what's the difference between a normal balloon and a helium grade balloon? Well, I'll tell you what. Hydrogen and helium are both very, very small molecules. Very, very tiny in the whole, you know, all molecules are small, but these are even smaller. So when you have a normal latex or rubber balloon, as it expands under pressure, the gaps between the molecules gets bigger. That's the way it works. That means that very small molecules like those of hydrogen or helium can escape through the gaps. And that's why when you leave a balloon overnight, it goes down. It's not leaking at any one point, it's actually bleeding gas through its entire membrane. So helium balloons, in theory, have smaller gaps between the molecules that make up the rubber or the latex or the whatever of the film. So it's harder for the helium or the hydrogen atoms or molecules to get through those gaps. So in theory, a helium balloon will stay up longer. I don't know, it doesn't matter to us because these are just for experimental purposes. And honestly, I don't want my balloon going too far. It would be horrible to think that if I released a balloon here in the middle of the North Island of New Zealand, it could drift to near an airport and be mistaken for a drone. That would never happen anyway, but there you go. So today, today in our little experimental Mr. Science Corner, we're going to mix the sodium hydroxide with some more aluminum, aluminium, well, aluminum in America, aluminium in New Zealand. Mix with some more metal, make some hydrogen, fill up one of these balloons, measure the lift, measure the lift capability. Now this is a 30 centimeter balloon, which is about a foot. So we'll calculate the gas volume, Calculate what our theoretical lift should be and see how that matches to practice because as other people pointed out, the gas liberated by this chemical concoction uh, may not be pure hydrogen. Well, it probably is pretty pure, but it will have also a fairly high moisture content because as it gets hot, steam is generated and that steam goes up there. And steam is water vapor and that's heavy, heavier than air. So we'll have to measure the actual real lifting capability of our gas balloon versus the theoretical capability. That's why we do these empirical tests, because the theory doesn't always stick up with the science because there can be a lot of different variables that we forget about or have an unknown effect. So we're going to quantify the effect of those variables and hopefully that means when we go to do our big balloon, we'll know exactly how much sodium hydroxide, how much aluminium and what the lift will be out of that balloon. There you go. Enough ranting, let's get on, let's do some science. Yay! Oh, by the way, today we don't have a dead fly on the bench. We, oh, come here. We've got a little spider, a little jumping spider. Where is he? He won't play ball. No, he's off camera. Come on, come on. Here we go. Let's try and get him on the... Is he in frame yet? Go, go that way, go that way, that way, that way. Here we go. See? An animal in every video. There you go. Well, an insect. Is he under there? There he goes. Look, 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 look. There you go. Friendly little spider. Anyway, on with the science. Okay, for all the, I hope I'm in frame here, for all the safety conscious, you can see I've got all the safety gear here, I've got my high vis on, I've got the danger sign, so hopefully everything will go smoothly, all our materials are here, and I hope the wind noise isn't going to ruin this, but 
What I've got here is a one litre container with about 250 millilitres of water in it. And I'm gonna put this inside a concrete or a cinder block, I think they call them in parts of the world. That's just in case something goes boom, we've got side protection, also stops it from falling over. Very important. Now I'm gonna put on my, my full body condoms because this is very important. I'm gonna be dealing with corrosive chemicals. Now these gloves are old, they're all useless, never mind. It's the thought that counts. Always cut towards a friend. Oh no, these gloves are wrecked. Um, should use nitrile, latex not so good for this. Um, but I only have latex gloves, so that's what I'll use. And of course I'm always very careful, very careful at every step of the whole process. Ooh, here we go. These are someone else's gloves, they don't fit me very well. But anyway, sorry about the changing and lighting and everything as well. Um, I'll put my safety face mask on. Look at that, I'm perfectly safe and you can't hear me anymore. Never mind. Right, funnel. Now, I'm adding the sodium hydroxide to the water. That's more important, that's quite important. If you add the water to the sodium hydroxide, it will end in tears. So, open the childproof container. There we go. And I'm just gonna put about roughly what I think is the right amount. And this is an exothermic reaction, remember, so do a little bit at a time. Well, make sure she's all dissolved. 500 grams in this container, so yeah, a bit more, a little bit more. There we go. Probably too much, but that's the price you pay. Now, always, once you've used your chemicals, make sure the lid's screwed back on and get them away. You don't want them going up if something goes wrong. So. Take the chemicals well away from the work area. Like so. Oh, I know the safe for things falling off. Right. Give it a good stir. Make sure it's dissolved. Yep, that's warm. It's very warm because I can feel it. It's the exothermic reaction. So I'm going to let that settle for a while. Just cool down because it'll be too hot. We'll have too vigorous a reaction. So, jump cut. Righto, while we're waiting for that to cool down, let's talk payloads. Payloads, we're gonna carry something on this balloon, so we need to know how much weight we're gonna to have to hoist into the air now. Simply, we could use something like this, go, there we go. Something like this little run cam setup here, brilliant setup, which is a CCD camera and transmitter, 11 grams with the wire. Look, 11 grams, next to nothing. But I don't wanna waste a really good camera, because these are quite an exceptional little camera. Um, so I'm thinking every man and his doll's got one of these old board cameras, especially if you flew, fly mini quads. These, I've got heaps of these left from the early mini quad days when they were their camera of choice. And I've got some CMOS ones and other things. So these are surplus to requirement and I'm giving a number of these away to my Patreon supporters, but I've held a few back and I'm gonna see how much they weigh. Now there's 13 grams and here is the little transmitter module uh, that you can buy for 10 bucks on eBay. 5.8 gigahertz transmitter module adds another three grams, so that's next to nothing. And then of course battery, what are you gonna use? Here's a little 180 milliamp, it's a two cell 180 milliamp battery. All up, we're looking still at 28 grams, which in the old money is, what is that? Oh, let's go to the right one. It's an ounce, we're looking at an ounce. It's not a lot of weight. It's a, it's a very little amount of weight and we'll, we'll be using this amount of weight. We need, so we need to generate this, at least this much lift from our balloon, preferably a whole lot more because we want to go up, not just to sit there and not go up or down. So there we go. Of course there'll be an antenna, but I'm not gonna use a circularly polarized antenna. You don't need a circularly polarized antenna. We're not worried about multi-pathing and things. And in fact, we'll get better performance out of a sleeve dipole antenna. So we'll make a little sleeve dipole, or probably what we'll do is get one of those rubber ducky 5.8 antennas that we've all got millions of because everything you buy, all the video transmitters and all your goggles come with those antennas that you never use. So we'll rip one of those apart to make an antenna for this little module and we'll track it with a patch on the ground. So there we go. So an ounce, we gotta generate, let's be safe. Let's say we wanna generate, cause there's some other bits and pieces too, a couple of little capacitors and things, nothing really very much, but we wanna generate um, two ounces, at least two ounces of lift. And of course, another problem with the setup, as you said here, compared to the, this one here, no problems, run it off two cells, just fine. But this one, these board cameras are typically 12 volts and we've only got a, two cell battery, seven volts or eight volts. How are we gonna manage that? Well, I'm gonna show you a little trick. You don't need an expensive Palulu 
voltage booster thing you can uh, with a little one any 555 and some diodes and a couple little caps you can make your own voltage booster see if we can get our seven or eight volts up to 12 or 13 volts to run that camera may work may not another interesting part to this whole project we'll do a bit of electronic re we'll get the pixies dancing around in here make that camera work from a two cell battery see how that goes because i know these usually go black at about nine volts so that ain't going to cut the custard we'll make our own little circuit unless you want to use a camera that works down to you know two cells if you can do that save yourself that hassle in fact i might look for one of those initially see if i can use a low voltage camera and we may do the voltage booster as a later addition but let's go and see whether our sodium hydroxide solutions cooled down enough to inflate a balloon okay here we go i've we've got a cooler solution now in this container and i've got several bits of aluminium foil that i've crushed up to reduce the surface area because we don't want too rapid a reaction we saw what happened last time in the little cup what happened so i've got these scrunched up to try and keep the reaction relatively slow may work may not work get rid of the materials and i've got my balloon here which i've pre-inflated i blew that up with my own breath uh, to make sure that the rubber was pre-stretched and what's going to happen is i'm going to put the aluminium in i'm going to slip this over the neck of that bottle sounds pretty dodgy doesn't it i'll go and get my gloves and we'll give it a go it's probably easier without gloves but because i know safety's first we're going to put my gloves back on here we go and of course the face mask so you can't hear me talk most essential makes the video so much better when you can't hear what i'm saying right um, here we go. If I take my gloves off and do this without them, it's only because it's such a latex on latex. Sometimes it doesn't work very well. So I'll do it first without taking the gloves off, and then I'll try it. If it doesn't work, I'll have to put the gloves on. I mean, take them off. Here we go. Is there any? Oh, get going before the old bubbling starts, perhaps. Oh, this is really hard with gloves. I've got to say, very hard to do with gloves on. Ah, oh. oh, I broke the balloon! Wouldn't you? Let's go and get another balloon. Jump cut. Okay, that's still going as you can see. So now I'm gonna have to try and do this with the gloves on because obviously It'd be very silly to do this without the gloves. I could end up hurting myself quite badly with that. Oh, here we go. Oh, look at it go. Woohoo! <laughs> Much faster than I'd expected. We'll let it get to a reasonable size. Then we'll take it off and tie it up. Is that 30 centimeters? I think it's close. Right, there we go. Woohoo, that was good. Ah, and this is really, really hot. <laughs> I think we used a little too much concentrated solution. Never mind. And of course, because it was hot, it's now cooling down, it's shrinking. So I probably didn't get as much in here. Ow, ow, burn my hands. Whoa, <laughs> this balloon is so hot. This, the, the gas coming out of there is extremely hot. Whoa, probably gonna melt that bottle. Whoa, as I said before, um, but look how much that shrunk, simply because the gas coming out is so very hot. These are things that we're gonna learn. It's empirical testing. Whoa, I'm much, I should put that back on there actually because now this balloon has cooled. It shrunk enormously. I actually want more. I want some more than this. This is not very much gas at all. Not enough to even lift this balloon, I don't think so. Let's see if I can do it again. Oh. Might have to let the gas out of this one to put it back on, but see what we can do. Oh, Ooh, that is hot. So you don't have to. Woo! Look at that. <laughs> so gas is still nowhere near as quickly the gas growing at the moment, but there is still gas coming out of there. This will probably go bang. That's why I have the face shield on. See that? Here we go. Whoa! Hot again. <coughs> and quite caustic, I have to say. <laughs> Breathing those fumes and didn't do me any good. <coughs> right. Ooh, this is. Kind of fun, kind of scary. And don't do this at home till I've sorted out all the correct amounts of stuff. And now fumes are blowing around everywhere. Oh, latex on latex. It's very hard to work. Get your fingers in the right place. It's not working well at all. I think we'll use a bubbler. I'm going to do that in the next video. I'm going to make a bubbler which will take the heat out of the out of the 
gas and also remove any corrosive elements from the gas. At the moment, whoa, gotta get my fingers out. Yes, I can. There's our balloon. And no, it's not even, not even buoyant. Probably because of the moisture. So we've learned something here. That's actually quite negatively, that's heavy. <laughs> Now hopefully you'll be able to see this. I want you to see that this is heavy in there because it's got a lot of water in it. Look, look at the water in the bottom of that balloon. That's the, this, the water vapour that came up out of the bottle and that's actually heavier than the hydrogen that's supposed to be lifting this balloon. So it, it's not, it's not, it's actually really heavy. This balloon weighs a lot because of that water in there. So we're going to have to take the hydrogen gas off, run it through a filtering system that removes the moisture and that's not uncommon and oops, in compressors we often do that we have a compressor air compressor you need a moisture trap to get rid of the moisture and then we need to make sure that there's no corrosive elements getting through there as well such as bits of sodium hydroxide so there you go the experiment will continue